So, this is a sequel. Watch part one for more context. These are the rules. We can only use the main character. We can only use the dual blade and the silver sword. No co-op. And we can only use the corresponding element for each region. Now that we've reviewed, let's get started. We start our journey by obtaining the power of Geo, and since we've obtained a new power, let's look at our new artifacts. We are running a two-piece Exile and two-piece Berserker set with the Geo Damage Bonus Goblet as our off-piece. I swapped from Instructor to Exile because I felt that having my Q up was a bigger priority than increasing the strength of our shields, and we are keeping the Berserker set because, yeah. We throw some rocks at some enemies, explore leeway a little, and obtain our first constellation which was actually very helpful, but we still need to be AR-23 to start the leeway quest, and we are currently not that, but it's okay, because I know a secret. But you can't tell anyone about this, because if John Mahoyo finds out, they will patch it. I found a way to get AR extremely fast. There's this domain in Mondstadt called Cecilia Garden, and for the easier challenges, it offers 100 AR per completion. So, I just complete these challenges whenever I get AR locked, and since I don't have to spend Primo Gems on the account for wishes, I can use them to refresh our resin, making Goku the ultimate time whale. After about four hours of grinding, we hit AR-23 and start the Leeway Archon quest. Earth-style flying stone! Rex Lapis has been killed. Seal the exits. We sneak past the guards using the award-winning stealth mechanics of this game. And the game award goes to... Genshin Impact. <laughs> and we meet a child. He says he's a Fatui agent, but we don't need to worry about him because he's not like the other Fatui agents. And he gives us a hall pass. That way, we can go tell the school administrators that the principal died at the opening ceremony. We make it to the moon administrator, but we get interrupted so he lends us his strength. <laughs> After we held nothing back, we told the Moon Man about the death of Rex Lapis. Preposterous. Preposterous. The lead. And he sends us to meet Zhao. We meet the edgy band kid and he tells us to leave. So, we have to make some tofu in order to bring him back. We ask the chef to make it, but he's too scared of a ghost. So we have to go ghost busting. Oh, and do you remember when I said this? And then we move on to the second worst enemy in this entire challenge. The Eye of the Storm. Well, let me introduce you to the worst enemy in this entire challenge. The Ruin Hunter. This enemy is a piece of ass! My sword only does like 52 damage to it, so I can only hurt it by throwing a fucking rock at it. And that's on an 8 second cooldown, which feels like an hour. And then he flies into the air of some yoga position for the length of the Godfather trilogy, so I just have to stand there with my thumb up my ass waiting for him to shoot missiles that have a bigger radius than my ult. Why is it a bigger radius than my ult? And then he drops down and starts attacking me with moves that deal over 3,000 damage. Why does it do 3,000 damage? I'm in world level 1. Not not to mention his ground moves have some of the worst hitboxes I've ever seen in a video game. And I've seen Paladin's gameplay before. Like, how the fuck did that shit hit me? I wasn't in it! I wasn't in it! After we defeat the Ruin Hunter, we talk to Dusty Ming, and we give Zhao some food. Rex Lapis, I... Then we head off to find the Mountain Administrator. We help some dude find his brother and tell the Mountain Man what happened. Rex Lapis, at the right of dissension? Afterwards, we get our second constellation, which is actually pretty good for us. We make it to the outside of Cloud Administrator's office. After making the food, the Cloud Administrator lets us into our office. But, there is a problem. We need to activate the Pyro Pillar. And Goku is not Pyro. So it seems like our challenge in Liwa is finished. But remember who we're talking about. This is Goku. I Goku always surpasses his limits. And by using our surroundings, we jump from the tree and jump to our destiny. Which didn't work the first time, so we put a rock on the tree, which eventually worked. First try. Rex Lapis, how can this be? We head back to homeroom. And Child tells us that he knows a guy who can tell us some more information about the Geo Archon. But we have to get our money up first. So... 
Terrace. We hit AR-25 and we enter the first ascension domain. Halfway into the domain, I realized that I could still ascend Goku and our weapons, so I stopped to do that real quick. He's just standing there. We fight the second Fatui agent and clear out the rest of the hilly trolls that refuse to group up. And we head to the final boss of the domain, the Electro Hypostasis, who was actually really annoying. The fighting part was fine, but the revival prisms part was the problem. In order to destroy the prisms, I had to do three things. I had to use my ult and hit them with my E twice. If I did not do all of those things, I could not destroy a prism. I lost to this boss twice because of the time. Eventually, after my kids graduated college, we defeated Aleph. As a reward, we get to meet Mr. Zhang Li. Hi. Yeah? Mr. Zhang Li says he's very familiar with the school of Li Wei, and says he can help us prepare a funeral for the principal. The first thing we need to do is get some rocks, but not just any rocks. Mr. Zhang Li says we need to get the premium rocks. So we head over to Dad Daopa Jorge to burn some rocks, but we have a problem. I can't heat up the pot with Geo, so... But I'm technically not breaking any rules because the quest is in Mondstadt, so I can technically use Animal? I know it's a bit of a stretch. We head back to Leeway, buy the best rock, and place it down. Mr. Zhang Li then tells us that the next thing we need to do is make some perfume. We make the perfume and find out that Rex Lapis is actually into gilfs. And speaking of gilfs, our next objective is to obtain the cleansing bell, which is in the possession of Madam Ping. We clean her teapot out, find the cleansing bell, and hand it to Mr. Zhang Li. We attempt to buy a kite and child laughs at us for being poor. <laughs> then we head over to the pharmacy to look for some everlasting incense. Ugh, it's hideous. She says she will give us the everlasting incense if we can hunt the Coco Goat with the Ballista. We go to the Ballista and fight some treasure hoarders who are actually very annoying because they kept falling off the platform. Then we head back to the pharmacy and find out that the Coco Goat is not real and that Chi Chi is actually just really dumb. But Child buys the incense for us because he's a nice guy. We place the incense down and go on a date with Mr. Zhang Li, but we are then interrupted by Mommy? She tells us that Miss Ningguang, the business teacher, wants to see us in her office, the Jade Chamber. We unlock our third constellation, but we get AR locked again. So you know what that means. <laughs> At least we were able to get our fourth and fifth constellation. After making it to AR-28, we start climbing up to the Jade Chamber and trigger the cutscene from beneath the actual objective again. Come on, John Mahoyo, you're better than this. The mechanism requires Animo, and since we are Geo, I had to break a rule. We used Animo on the mechanism, which led to nothing. So we go to the Ballista to look for another way. The Millilith tries to stop us, so we fight him off. And I forgot to swap back to Geo, so I'll just reenact how the fight would go with Geo. Ahem. Terra Smash! Quake! Cat Girl talks to us and tells us the correct way to get to the Jade Chamber. We reach the Jade Chamber, and Paimon notices that the Fatui have been doing research on the Hall Passes. We find evidence that the Fatui have been forging Hall Passes, but that's not important right now, so we head over to sing to some flowers. It's time to sing! Whenever you're ready! Four big guys, and they bust on my eyes, they eat my ass just like apple pie. Now that the important task is done, we go back to Liyue with Mr. Zhang Li to look for Child. But Zhang Li has to go to work and disappears from thin air. Before we confront Child, I swap weapons to the Dole Blade because I believe that for the rest of the cutscenes in the game, the Traveler is seen using the Dole Blade. So, this marks the end of the Silver Sword in our journey. We confronted the child, and it turns out that he's not a nice guy, because he wants to summon a monster. So, that means it comes down to... The battle. 
to dust! Eventually, we send him to detention, but he still summons the monster anyway. So, class, what did we learn today? There is only one thing worse than a rapist. Boom. A child. The school administrators show up, and we have to play Bloons Tower Defense until the administrators can eventually shoot down the monster. We were able to hold off the Fatui, very much so because of the buffs Ganyu, Zhao, and the Gilf gave us, because there was no way in hell I could have held them off of just my dull blade and a rock. But our efforts weren't enough. Lady Ningguang had to sacrifice her office in order to stop the monster and save the school. <laughs> We then meet Mr. Zhongli at the bank and discover that he was actually the Geo Archon all along. Which means the reason we did all those fetch quests was just because he wanted a nice funeral and he made us pay for it too. We head to the Rite of Parting and the crowd asks Goku what they could do to possibly repay him for protecting their great school. Ara, ara. Ara, ara. We talk to Zhongli, no longer Mr. Zhongli because he lied to us, and he tells us about Inazuma. We learn more about the Raiden Shogun and the Vision Hunt Decree. And with that, we obtain our last constellation. And our journey so far is over. Wait, wait, what's that noise? No way. We meet the narrator guy at Angel Share, and we get to say the funny line again. <laughs> he asks us if we know anything about Abyss Heralds, and he agrees to be our traveling companion for a little bit. We head to Storm Terror's lair to see if we can find any leads on the Abyss Herald. After the battle, our Goku senses start tingling, and we head up only to find footprints. After smelling the footprints, <sighs> We head to some ruins and find some pretty dark imagery for this game. As we're leaving the temple, we finally come across an Abyss Herald. Which, honestly, was not much of a threat. We head back to Monsat and help some furry save his dad from an Abyss Herald. Then we head back to the ruins and get to the bottom of this. In the ruins, we find another Herald, but since he deals Hydro damage and we get a Hydro Shield from our E, this fight is pretty underwhelming. But as the fight reaches its climax, we get to see an old face. You mean? Who was able to keep her sword for some reason? What is this bullshit? But with that final parting, we go over everything that happened, and our journey in Leeway is over. And we get ready for our journey into Inazuma. Hey everyone, just a quick update. I do not have the Inazuma portion recorded yet, but I don't think it'll take too long because I don't believe any of the quests are AR locked. My classes start back on the 18th, so my goal is to have the Inazuma video out before then. Oh, and I was able to activate the Electro Pillar for the Barrier Side quest. I still can't do the Cryo one yet, but I found a solution that involves the Portable Waypoint. I just have to get enough reputation to unlock it. So yeah, that's it. Drive safe, and hopefully I'll see you guys later. Tell me